Hi, Carson Reed with Cinema Motions, and today we're going to be knocking out the Destiny 2 retargeting tutorial. So, I've done a few of these in the past, they haven't really been the best. Um, this has been what I've been using for the past six or seven months now, and it's worked out pretty well for me. Um, this video is primarily going to be for the Rococo contest. I look forward to seeing everybody's submissions. This is going to be a really fun contest. Um, all of the things that I talk about in the video are either going to be linked down in the description or I'll have some sort of text pop up about right here. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on into Blender. Um, now, there is a Google Drive link down in the description below where you'll be able to download all of our available assets. We have things from characters, weapons, some NPCs, enemies, and some world design buildings. Uh, we do have uh, asset packs if you want to build out a world in that sense. Um, what you might need is WinRAR, so again, link down in the description below. You don't need to pay for it, just right click, extract to here or to that file. Um, other than that, pretty good. There's going to be a few things that we might need um, in terms of add-ons. I personally use AutoRig Pro due to the fact that it has a lot more little controllers and the rig that it creates is just a lot more uh, finely tuned. and. Um, I also use something called the animation layers. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what animation layers are, um, pretty much you have your base layer of animation, say moving up your hand keyframe to keyframe, up and down. Um, but say you wanted to change that after the fact without changing the timing. So say you wanted to go up and down, but you also wanted to go to the side. What an animation layer does is it adds another layer of uh, additive keyframes where it just shifts it over. Um, and I use that all the time. So it's a really great, add-on, uh, I think it's like 20 bucks, 14 bucks over on Blender Market. Again, the link will be down in the description below. And uh, yeah, so those are really the only things you'll need. If you want to use the Rococo retargeting tool, you're more than welcome to. The naming hierarchy is going to change just a tiny bit, um, but the basic principles are exactly the same. Now, I've got my Blender character open already. Uh, you can either download this exact same one from the community model submissions list, or you can download one of the other characters and uh, mess around with those. So first, you'll see a character, they're set up, they've got lighting, materials, all of that should be set up. Now, if it has pink on the hands or neck, just go up to the top, file, uh, external data, and then find missing files. And then it should just be in that same texture folder, so then just hit search. It's a weird thing, whatever. So now onto the juicy parts. Most of our characters come with the rig, a D2 Skeleton IK. Now this is already pretty good. If you want to use this with the Rococo uh, add-on, you're more than welcome to. It works pretty well. Um, I personally like to change up the entire rig because there's a lot more control in the one that I use. So hit in on your keyboard if you had Auto Rig Pro installed. Go ahead and scroll on down to it. You'll go to Auto Rig Pro Quick Rig. You'll hit import and grabbing the file names. So I have somewhere, <laughs> um, an updated ik.python blend uh, file. So I'll also include that. It'll probably be in a little Google Drive link down below. Um, it's not a very heavy file. I think it's like, it's nothing, literally nothing. Um, so go ahead and hit import bone mapping. Now what this does is it just grabs all of the little pieces, gives them names, and then you can uh, just go ahead and hit quick rig. I use preserve volume and neck twist. Preserve volume just sort of fixes some of the deformations and it keeps it uh, looking a lot nicer. All you do is hit okay. Give it a few seconds and my version is broken. I just updated it too. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> In all hindsight, I probably should have tested it before because Blender has a bit of a stroke occasionally. Anyways, uh, I'm gonna cut back in a second. Okay, so slight change of plans. Just install 3.1, it's the latest, it's great. It is super fast and it works extremely well. Um, just go ahead and grab that one. Now that I have Blender open, 
and I have loaded up my character, you'll see they've got some textures, um, they've got their lighting. If there's missing files, just go ahead, uh, go to File, External Data, Find Missing Files. It should be in the same folder. Um, so I'm really just talking about like the hands and neck because sometimes those textures turn out pink, very strange. So now that you've gone ahead and got your character all loaded up, I'm once again using Quick Rig and I've updated about to the latest, I hope. And I'm gonna grab this Python. I've included it down in the description in hopefully like a little Google Drive or something. Uh, all I do is hit okay. Ah, it worked. Okay, so, so now that you've got your character in a rig, um, you can go ahead and quickly test moves around exactly the way that you want it to. Sweet, that's all we have to do in terms of uh, setting up our character. Um, now the next thing is, I'm just gonna hide these things real fast. Oops. So now I'm only left with my character. So if you go over to the Rococo Studio app, they actually have a motion library and they've got a bunch of free assets that you can use. There's also some really good paid ones and you can use those in these projects. Um, in fact, the Made with a Coco contest, they really want you to. They want to see what you can do. If you don't already have a suit or gloves. Um, now, I personally have both pieces of tech and I also have face capture um, and they all work really well together. Now, the last project that I did for My Name is Bife uh, called Dynasty, I used all of my Rococo motion capture stuff and it worked really well. Um, go ahead and click the link down in the description below if you haven't already watched it. It's almost at a million views at the time of uh, recording this. So something like 918, 910. So um, you can see the first six minutes, it's actually me. Um, you can see just how well the suits hold up and they're really fun to use. Um, you just toss them on, hit record, get to it. Um, and you just sort of have fun. So inside of Rococo Studio, what I use most of the time is I export as BVH. Now BVH is motion capture data, just straight up. And in Blender, you get a few more options compared to FBX. You're allowed to, it'll automatically resize the timeline depending on how long you want your shots to be. And it'll automatically scale down um, the frame rate of the animation. So I'm just gonna, before importing, I'm gonna go over here and just make sure that it's set to 24 or 23.98. Then I will go up into file, import, BVH, and then I go into my exports uh, tab and just grab whatever I want. So I am going to use take one, which I don't know what it was, but these are the two settings that you'll want. You'll want animation, scale FPS, and updated scene duration. Those are the real ones that you want. You just hit import BVH. Now you'll want to make sure that you're on frame zero and it will be very large in comparison to your character. Just uh, go ahead and scale that down using S or you can use a gizmo on the side if you're feeling a little risky. Um, now, all I do really is line up on the shoulders because after the shoulders, everything else you can just fix up later. Um, then you go into Auto Rig Pro's remap. You select your Rococo animation as your source armature and then your rig that you've just created as the target armature. You're gonna hit build bone list, scroll on down to mapping presets. And once again, I have another little code um, with all the naming hierarchy and you'll want to grab that. So it should just be remap preset. Then after that, you'll want to go ahead and click on your motion capture skeleton and then hit redefine rest pose. Hit current pose. You'll want to drag select all of the bones on the left hand. Hit copy select the bones. You'll want to do the exact same on the right hand. And then just for the legs, turn on X axis mirroring and then just sort of rotate them into position. And you don't need them to be super precise. Um, what I like to do is just scale down these shoulders a little bit and then rotate them up, rotate these down, scale them out, because yes. And then let's see, I'm gonna rotate this up a little bit. Now, some of the Destiny models might um, have you in local mode. You can go ahead and just go open in the middle, it transforms and then change it to global, local, normal, whatever you like. I prefer global. Um, and then, yeah, you can just move things along how you like. Now that you've got all of this selected, go out of edit, uh, pose mode, hit apply. It'll be like, oh, well, nothing happened. You're being lied to, misled, misjudged. Hit retarget. It'll tell you if you've got the latest version that you've got an error, it's fine. Um, 
let the error disappear, and then just hit retarget again. It'll automatically retarget all of the frames. You just hit okay, let it do its thing. So now that it's gone ahead and doing, done its thing, it looks a little wonky. It's totally fine. Um, just uh, hit the spacebar. Boom, your character is now moving. And if you have the gloves, then it completes with all the gloves. Now, I'll let this play, but there's a few things obviously that look a little odd. The hands are clipping in through the body. Um, some of the hands are a little weird. They're shaped, uh, like shifted off to the side a little bit. You know, it's not the cleanest, cleanest data. Like there's a little bit of jitter. I'm gonna teach y'all the secrets to the cleanest data possible. So before doing anything, Select your uh, rig, go into pose mode, open up your graph editor. Now you'll be greeted with a bunch of these little dancing ants, all right? They're, they look terrifying, they are terrifying, but you can tame this beast. Alt, Shift, O, it's the first step. You do that once, okay? What that'll do is anytime that there isn't a keyframe data that got recorded, it will fill it in with its own bezier handle. And it works pretty well. Um, it works a lot better on things like your bottom leg pull targets. So if your knee moves, but it doesn't fully <laughs> move around all that much, that's something that you might wanna do. And it just cleans it up a tiny bit. And then after hitting Alt Shift O, Alt Shift -O once, um, you're gonna let it load, do its thing. Now, depending on how many frames you have and how beefy of a rig you have, it might take a little bit longer, a little bit shorter. Um, now this is my laptop. So it's still pretty beefy. It's got a 3080 in it and I love it. Thank you, Razer. Um, but yeah, it's just sort of hardware dependent. But I'm gonna let it do its thing really fast. And then once that's done, all you need to do is hit Alt-O once and any of those sort of quick micro judders instantly removed. So I'm gonna hit Alt-O once, boom. And if you saw, I'll put a little instant replay too. Um, if you saw some of those jitters just disappeared. They got all got smoothed out. So now that I'm out of graph editor, we take a look at these keyframes again. Much cleaner, just like that. So <laughs> that's really most of it. Um, everything else from this point on is using animation layers. So once again, if you don't have it, Definitely, definitely get it. Um, if you don't want to use like the paid add-on, which makes it this super simple little UI icon that you can just adjust and all that kind of thing. Um, Sam already has a video on the, the Rococo channel and it's using the exact same way. It's just, this makes it so much easier. So all I'm gonna do is hit create add -on, uh, animation layers, hit new animation layer. And then I'm just going to turn on auto keyframing and in my case, you'll see that these hands are a little wonky. They're all shifted off to the side. It's because these um, bones down at the base, the Destiny characters don't have them. So it just gets duplicated. So all I do is hit Alt-R, done. I'm gonna do the same for the other hand. Now, at a specific point where you notice that the hands clip through the body, you might want to just really basic hit G to move it around. Boom, just like that, hands are cleaned. Um, so you'll wanna do that throughout the whole thing. Now, due to the fact that the skeleton is IK based, meaning that it's just going off position, sometimes the scale might be off for when you do the initial retarget. So what can happen is this snapping. Um, now this is fine-ish if you really want it, um, but I always just fix it up, move around. So I'm using the hotkeys GR. So G is to move, R is to rotate. Um, so I'm gonna do the same for this other hand. And since my body proportions aren't perfectly aligned to some of these Destiny characters, you might wanna have to move them out a little bit more. Um, you can mess around with the shoulders, do all that kind of fun stuff. So I'm going to actually just push these up and I'm using Alt-R for that. But you'll notice you've got pull targets in the back and pull targets for the legs as well. Um, so I'm gonna just really briefly clean up the leg right here and right here. Now, one of the cool things about Auto Rig Pro's rig is that if your feet go down enough, the toe will actually start to try to catch the ground. Um, you also get this really nice little roll and then you have your heel rolls and then you have your little toes, which I just moved the wrong thing. 
So this is your little pedestal bone that I like to use around as like, if I jump or do a front flip, the character might move in the motion capture data. So all I do is use that to sort of back it up and clean it back to where I think it should go. So if we take a look at it now, I mean, this is, this is clean. This is as good as it gets. Um, super simple. Now I've already done an animation with this. Um, should be somewhere this side. Um, but you can do a lot of really fun things. And I'm actually going to provide some animation data for y'all to use. Um, just if you use it, go ahead and tag me. I'd love to see it. Um, now, this process that I've just shown you now works really well with my Destiny stuff. You can still use it on other characters, obviously. It's the same process, just you might need to change the retargeting hierarchy names and um, the redefining rest pose. It might be different. So make sure that you're using current though, because rest pose for the Rococo suit looks a little like a folded droid, <laughs> um, but it works. Um, so here's this character and that's all that you do. Um, not a whole lot. If you really want to get some cool stuff, um, I'm going to teach the way that I do my cloth sims. Um, so I make a quick vertex group, name a cloth. I go into weight paint mode. Y orthographic, and then I use Alt and just drag from the top down, just like so. I go into here, into edit mode. We're going to M, merge by distance, because sometimes there's vertices that are too close to each other. Then I'll go into Alt J, which goes tries to quads. Um, now this is, this is a little bonus thing. Um, I add a subdivision surface, a cloth modifier, go on down to shape, type in my cloth, I'll also go ahead and open up the cache and change the um, duration so that it lasts a bit longer. Make sure that your subdivision service for the first one that you put in is both of them are set to one. Then you'll also add another subdivision surface. And if your cape has a alpha channel, you'll want to avoid this step. But if it doesn't, you can go ahead and add a solidify modifier. Now what that'll do is give it a little bit more thickness. Um, so I don't know if you can see it here, but this one actually does have an alpha channel. So that's a little unfortunate, but um, might be able to mess around with some of these settings. I've actually never used this, like played around with it fully. But uh, also make sure that your characters have collisions set up. So you just go in here, scroll on down, thickness outer, thickness inner, drop it and also turn off single-sided because that will break the, um, the bake. It'll look really strange if it does that. Okay. And just like that, cloth is now moving. Uh, I'm gonna turn on, whoops, head collision as well. And if you wanna change your cache start, you can put it back a little bit so that it starts at a more normal pose. Um, and then once it gets to it, like 63 is my frame, Boom, cloth looks really good um, and it's interacting with the world and all your motion capture data is super clean um, using animation layers again, you can clean it up. You can actually change entire shots. So if you have just a basic walking animation, you can change it from a walk with the hand cannon out uh, into an AR or into a sniper or a rocket launcher, anything like that you can use with animation layers. This was using my own motion capture data, but again, if you grab it from the Rococo Studio motion library, it's about the same. Um, they just look a tiny bit different. Um, don't worry, won't scare you. If you're using the animation layers, you're gonna be completely fine. And if, again, you take a look at Sam's motion capture retargeting tutorial for Blender that he's already made, um, there will be a link down in the description for that. Um, he uses the exact same process, it's just not in a super small little icon box. So, that concludes the Destiny 2 retargeting tutorial. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to DM me over on Twitter. You can tag me in something. I also have an Instagram, which is just some emotions. And um, yeah, I look forward to seeing everybody's submissions. These contests are really a lot of fun, and I can't thank the Rococo community enough. Um, they've got really amazing tech and the people are super friendly. It is 
a really great place to be. If you wanted to go ahead and join our Discord, there's also a link down in the description below. If you have any questions or concerns, go ahead and join the Discord down below where you'll be able to tag me directly and I can hop into a voice channel and we can get everything sorted out. Thank you all for watching. And uh, if I have any updates on the tutorials, I'll probably post them on the Twitter. Um, but in the meantime, this is what I've been using for the past six or seven months. So I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye.